welcome everyone. Uh, really a pleasure for me to join you and, uh, and a real honor uh, to be a part of today's program. Let me say before uh, I, uh, I forget to do so, how uh, very thankful I am to Audit Board uh, for being the sponsor of this book. Uh, we worked really hard on this book over the last year. This is one of those uh, creative projects that we undertook in uh, during the pandemic, uh, kind of in uh, isolation, work from home. Uh, we're very proud of it. And I'm gonna talk to you over our time together this afternoon about some of the key themes and uh, findings uh, from the work that we did in putting together agents of change, internal auditors in an era of disruption. So let's get started. During our time together, I, I want to explore very quickly with you the, the question uh, that perhaps some of you are asking, and hopefully many of you will have the answer to, and that is, should we be agents of change? Is that a role? Is that an appropriate role for internal auditors? Then we're gonna talk a little bit about how this is a profession that has been in evolution throughout its history, and that we really bring a legacy of change to our roles as internal auditors. We're gonna talk about enacting change first and foremost in our own organizations and in the internal audit function itself. And then the real meat and potatoes of this afternoon's discussion, what does it take to be a powerful agent of change? What are the attributes or what is the right stuff that agents of change have inside of them that make them effective in their roles uh, as internal auditors? And then I wanna close by looking forward and talking a little bit about uh, agents of the future. So let's get started. The question uh, that we need to start with is, should internal auditors be agents of change? The word change is often sort of reserved to a management responsibility. So what are we talking about when we ask a question or put forward a proposition that internal auditors should be involved in change? Well, it, it comes down to how we define agents of change and internal audit. And let me say that I've been talking about um, internal auditors as agents of change for years. The first time that I blogged on the subject was all the way back in 2014, when I first put forward the proposition that internal auditors should be agents of change. Now, as we got ready to undertake this project, um, it, it followed my earlier books on trusted advisors and also the speed of risk um, as we get ready to undertake this project, um, I wanted to take a similar path to the one that I took when we did uh, Trusted Advisors. And that is, I didn't want the book to be all about what I think. It should really be a reflection of what is the contemporary thinking and what is actually happening in the practice of internal audit. So we started by going out and asking chief audit executives what they thought but the first thing we needed to do before we started asking them should internal auditors be agents of change is to share with them our definition. And so my definition of an agent of change in the internal audit world is these are internal auditors who are catalysts for transformation that not only protects but creates value. Now, again, we've long talked about internal auditors as value protectors, but we're now, we're now talking much more about internal audit's role in creating value. So let's, let's see what the chief audit executives around the world thought of that particular pro proposition or that definition. Now, using the same methodology that I used a number of years ago when I wrote Trusted Advisors, we went out using the uh, Audit Executive Center of the IIA and we polled chief audit executives literally around the world. More than 600 chief audit executives responded to our survey. And we asked them some questions. And here's what we heard. So first of all, we ask, um, is it appropriate for internal audit to function as an agent of change within the organization? Now, I must confess, I was surprised by how progressive the responses were. 90%, 90% of those who responded said, yep, it's appropriate for internal auditors to functions as agents of change within the definitions that we outlined earlier. 
Then we asked some questions that kind of cut to a bit of reality. Executive management fully or moderately supports internal audit driving change within the organization. That surprised me too. Almost 80%, 78% said, yep, they get, they get the uh, sense that management would be supportive of internal auditors being agents of change. And so we then asked, what about boards? And that surprised me even more because 80% of the chief audit executives who responded said boards would see it as an appropriate role for internal auditors to be agents of change. Then comes the reality check. We said, do you think internal audit is viewed as an agent of change within your organization? And only about 50% said, yes, we're seen as change agents in our company or our organization, government agency, whatever uh, the enterprise happens to be where internal audit is working. And then we said, how many of you think internal audit is not viewed as an agent of change? And almost a quarter came back and said, no, we're not seen as change agents in our organizations. So you can see from the survey results there that there is a bit of a gap uh, between what uh, chief audit executives think our role should be and how they see internal audit as being seen or viewed within the organization. So let's move on then and say, all right, we think there is a consensus that this is a role for internal audit to play. And we also believe um, that in most organizations, uh, management and boards see it as a role internal audit should play. So what are the things that we should be considering? Well, first of all, I think there's a strong defense to be made for the profession continuing to evolve into this next realm. If you think about it, the internal audit profession has evolved really throughout its history. We have a legacy of change that some researchers have suggested literally goes back 6,000 years. So, you know, almost 6,000 years back into human history, you begin to see um, the, the, the sort of uh, concepts of accountability, uh, the, 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 the forerunners to um, modern or what, what is today modern record keeping, um, the kind of controls that make sure uh, that assets and things of value are protected. Uh, some of those concepts go back literally a millennium. But at, at a minimum, I think we could argue that we are a product of centuries of change in the internal audit profession. And it's a change that is accelerating in velocity. Um, I think there's a bigger imperative though, uh, rather than to look behind, to be really looking ahead. And so I have been a part of the internal audit profession for hard to believe, but closing in on a half a century myself. I've been in the internal audit profession uh, for 46 years. Um, I think this year will mark uh, 47 years. And I, I have seen an enormous amount of change just in the, the time that I've been a part of this profession. And, and if I look at it, I, I could say that in the early years that I was in the internal audit profession, the, the one the one sort of um, emphasis or imperative that internal auditors pursued is what, what I've referred to as hindsight. We, we were very much focused on what happened in the past. What happened last year, last week, last month? Were the controls designed and implemented effective? Were, uh, was there accountability? You know, it's always about, or at that time, was always about looking over our shoulders in some ways looking in the rear view mirror. But along the way, really, uh, I'd say throughout uh, the, the latter uh, half of the 20th century, internal auditors began to uh, focus not just on hindsight, but giving a more contemporary perspective, not just looking at what did happen, but looking at what is happening. And that's what we start to talk about internal auditors providing insight looking uh, behind us, continue to look behind us, but also looking around us to be able to provide perspectives, uh, assurance and advice while it's still timely enough to make a difference. 
It doesn't do a lot of good if I come along and tell you you did something wrong last year. You might be more inclined to pay attention if I talk about what you're doing well or what improvements you need right now. I think, though, hindsight and insight alone really are not the, the ultimate destiny of our profession. I think our profession has an ultimate destiny to also provide uh, foresight, to be able to look forward as well as around us and behind. And yet, I think in some ways, our outdated processes, the way we do work ourselves, the way we undertake our own responsibilities really impair our responsiveness, our ability uh, to, to provide not only foresight, but some, some instances insight. I mean, think about how, uh, how challenging it is to get an audit report finished and produced and in someone's hand in time uh, for them uh, to make a difference. Now, I know that some have uh, raised a concern that if internal audit gets too close to decisions, that somehow that's going to impair uh, internal audit's independence or the objectivity of the internal auditors. And I think that that um, is a concept that sometimes is used as a crutch to keep us from taking the kinds of initiatives that we should take. Uh, I, really, uh, I really liked one quote in particular that came out of the three lines model, the new three lines of difference refresh that the I put out last year. And in there, it, it actually included a, a quote that independence does not mean isolation. So we can be independent, but we must recognize, and we should be independent, not that we can be, we should be, we must, and, and I say we, we the internal audit function. Independence is an organizational attribute. It's the internal audit function that needs to be independent. It's the internal auditors that need to be objective. We can do those things while still providing uh, the kind of foresight and even insight that we've been talking about. Now, we have to really start, as I said, the, the, the impairments sometimes uh, come from our own processes. The way we uh, do our own work can be one of the biggest impediments uh, for us to be agents of change. So we really have to start, if we're going to be change agents, by, by changing our own approaches and, and really looking hard at how do we carry out our responsibilities as internal auditors. And we actually use the, the expression, and there's a, there's a chapter in the book called Agent, Change Thyself. Very much a play on the old uh, physician, heal thyself. If we're expected, uh, or if we're trying to present ourselves as change agents in our organizations, and yet we're still using outdated and antiquated processes, and we don't have the kind of technology that, say, Audit Board has made available to us, if we're not doing those things, we're going to, number one, have a very difficult time in delivering results that are impactful and timely. Uh, and number two, we're going to have a real credibility issue. Um, if, I, if I don't have the ability to transmit my reports electronically, if I don't uh, use uh, data mining and analysis tools in generating powerful results, how do I expect that anyone is going to see me as an agent of change in the organization? So I do think there's an appetite for change. I do believe that within internal audit, um, it has been slow in developing. Um, I know the first of the technology solutions that I started to be impressed with uh, were almost uh, rolled out almost 20 years ago for the internal audit profession. But it's really only been within the last decade that I think the appetite uh, for change and changing how internal audit undertakes its role it really has only been in the last decade that we've seen that appetite really starting to grow. Now, we explore in the book that there really are four targets for change in the way internal audit undertakes its mission, starting with processes. I've sort of been alluding to that. And are we using processes that are designed to generate results quickly? Um, you know, I, I've been noted over the last few years by talking uh, about talking at the ability to audit at the speed of risk. 
sadly, a lot of our processes have us auditing at the speed of glaciers. And uh, if we're not able to get someone a report uh, or results or give them information uh, within a matter of days or weeks, uh, how are they really going to find that information to be as powerful or relevant as if we could get it to them much faster? So we talk a lot about the processes of uh, planning audits, uh, conducting the audits via field work, uh, the reporting of the audit results. All of those processes are very, very important in, in internal audits evolution into this era of being change agents. The work product itself, uh, too many of us still uh, believe that the only work product for an internal audit can, has to be a bound uh, report uh, with a lot of canned language and, uh, and it's a very slow and inefficient process. So that's an important target for change as well. The skill sets that we bring uh, to our roles uh, as internal auditors, if we are still bringing skills to our roles that were important 20 years ago, but we're not making the investments uh, to update and refine the skills that we bring, uh, we're not going to be seen as real change agents. And our mindset, do we have a flexible and agile mindset? And I'm going to come back to these topics of agility and flexibility later on. You really have to, if you're going to be a chief audit executive, or if you're going to be an, an audit leader, or if you're just going to be an internal auditor, you really have to work on this culture of change. We must cultivate a culture of change within our organizations and within internal audit itself. So let's go on to this topic of agility. Um, you know, I have written on uh, this topic many times, this idea of agility. Um, I have been talking about internal audits need to be agile and to be able to pivot uh, when needed to address new processes, new approaches, new technologies, new risks. I've been talking about this for over 20 years. But the idea of agile auditing has taken on an entire force of its own in the last few years. But I think, for me, there's really two ways to think about agile auditing. And I'm not uh, creating this new, uh, my good uh, friend and former colleague at the I, Rick Wright, was one of the first to coin this uh, notion of little a, agile, uh, versus big A, agile. Little a agile uh, is really more about uh, having an agile mindset. Uh, it's not about a formal kind of process or approach. It's about being able to, uh, to, to adjust quickly uh, to address the challenges and the problems that you have. I, I shared um, uh, some of my uh, experiences around this uh, in earlier books, and I go back into it in uh, Agents of Change where we talk about, um, where I talk about my experiences when I was leading the internal audit function of the Army, the internal review, decentralized internal audit function of the US Army back in the 1990s. And, and I talked about the fact that we, it was really a, an epiphany for me to realize how critical stakeholders are to internal audit success. Um, we were seeing some really draconian cuts to the internal audit functions across the Army because budgets had been reduced. And, and the people who were making the decision about how much funding to provide internal audit were, were making some very, very difficult choices. And in some cases, cutting the audit function by as much as 75% or more. And, and so I spent some time out there talking to stakeholders and others. And I began to appreciate that one of the big challenges that we faced as the internal auditors in the Army is that we weren't, we weren't very responsive. Um, our reports would often take weeks or months. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily be addressing the critical risks that the, that the stakeholders were facing. And, and sometimes we, we provided them with these long, laborious reports that were almost impossible to digest. And so we came out of that experience by saying, we got to change. We have to do some serious um, upgrading and updating of who we are and how we do it. And it, 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 it's we brought an agile mindset uh, to our roles. This was really the first time 
that I think we uh, really um, began to think of ourselves as, uh, as needing to be responsive. And so we put in place uh, new processes, uh, new methodologies. We started using technology. We brought an agile mindset uh, to our role and started doing things with much greater agility. Now, fast forward 20, 20 years, and now we're in an era where agile auditing is, is it's more of a formal noun. It's not so much, uh, it's not so much a verb, it's a noun. Uh, agile auditing is a formal uh, approach, a formal uh, sort of uh, approach to uh, internal audit. Uh, I know Audit Board has put out some great thought leadership on it. There, there are a lot of others ha who have done so as well. Uh, I think agile auditing can yield a lot of benefits, um, the big A agile, um, and, and really is rooted in many ways in, in leveraging, enabling technology. Agile auditing is a topic that we could spend uh, an entire seminar or perhaps, or an entire webinar or perhaps even an entire seminar on. So I'm not gonna delve into it too deeply here, but we do get into it in the book. We pull from several different resources, but agile auditing as, as, the, uh, as the formal big A agile auditing is being practiced today. A lot of the methodologies are rooted in, in, in the way software development has evolved. The idea of putting uh, very formal processes in place and there are a lot of great benefits from it. I would encourage you to study up on it and become more adept to it. Now, let me, let me move to sort of the, the, the third piece of this particular conversation around uh, the need for us to change ourselves. And, and I, I like the, 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 the sound bite that I have there so much that that became the title of one of the chapters, Agents of Change, can't be or are not secret agents. What does that mean? Well, it means that if no one knows what we do or if no one knows what we can do, we're not likely to be seen as agents of change. We have to, we have to tell our own story. We have to be able to recast the internal audit story. Now, I know a lot of you are, are like me, you're lifelong uh, internal auditors and you uh, uh, perhaps uh, are, are a little resistant to this idea, this concept that we should market what we do. You know, I don't believe that I'm talking about marketing internal audit here. I think I'm talking about creating awareness. We need to become, in the words of the IA's 2030 vision, we need to become indispensable in our organizations. And we're a long way from that in a lot of places. A lot of, uh, of, of companies and organizations would hardly call the internal auditors indispensable. So we have some work to do here. We need to forge an effective communication strategy within our own departments, within our own organizations, and we need to get out there and formally update our story. Uh, I can tell you from uh, my years uh, as a federal inspector general, we had, to, we had the license to do that as IGs, the, uh, the Inspector General Act, which uh, is, was the enabling legislation for IGs in the government, said that at least every six months, so we had this semi-annual reporting requirement, we needed to put together a report for the Congress on the things that we had worked on. Well, those of us who were, um, who were being a little more progressive in putting those reports together began to realize they're a great mechanism for telling our own story. What is it that we're focused on. What are our points of emphasis? What are the key risks we see in the organization? What kinds of audits did we do in the last six months? And what are some of key th threads and trends that we saw? So I, I would encourage each and every one of you to start to think about, do you tell? Does internal audit tell its story in a powerful and motivational way? Do you illuminate what internal audits focused on. I talk a lot about uh, the importance of being corporate beacons. That's one of the things that I think internal auditors can be and it's shining lights on, on, on the path forward. And so the question is, are we, are we telling our story in a way that illustrates where we can go, what our potential is, and also lights a path forward for the organization? 
You can't be an agent of change if you're a secret agent. Okay, now let's move to the part of our presentation where we really start to explore what does it take to be powerful agents of change in the internal audit function in the 21st century. Now, uh, I would tell you this would have been very tempting for me to put my own list together. But again, in keeping with the approach I took um, on earlier books, I wanted to know what do chief audit executives think are the right stuff or is the right stuff for agents of change in internal audit? And we got a lot of great feedback. Those surveys we did that I shared with you earlier, they came back and they gave us some, some very, very valuable feedback. And in the end, we were able to narrow down uh, the four characteristics or the four areas that we wanted to touch on. We were able to narrow that down uh, to, to four. So let's talk about them. Starting with business acumen, the real agents of change have a, a, a powerful uh, inner business acumen. It was the number one uh, characteristic. It was the number one uh, attributes for agents of change. And, and we really talk about it in, in two dimensions or, or from two perspectives. First of all, really good, powerful, effective change agents have what I would call a good general business acumen, a, gen, a good understanding of what good sound business principles are. Now, some of you may be saying, but I'm in government. I'm not really worried about business. Let me tell you, folks, I spent 26 years in government, and I, I, I think every day that I was an internal audit in government, uh, I was learning about good, solid business principles, good, sound stewardship, good, strong, effective controls. It's all the same. Uh, regardless of whether you have a profit motive or not, you need to have good, sound, general business acumen. And, and in the book, we borrow from several resources to talk about what are the characteristics that specifically people who have strong general business acumen, what are the things that they really have a strong, keen understanding of? First is financial acumen. Well, hopefully that's not going to be a problem for us because most of us do come from a background, whether it makes sense or not in the 21st century. Most of us, myself included, come from an accounting background. So we have hopefully a good sound financial acumen, uh, not just how you account for, but good financial principles as well. Good marketplace uh, acumen, understanding the marketplace in which you operate. Who are your uh, competitors? What is it that uh, competition uh, generates and how do organizations respond uh, to competitive or marketplace uh, disruption? Operational acumen, what, what does good sound operational principles look like and how do you design strong, effective and uh, efficient operations? Technology acumen, something that I think more of us need than, than currently have, but it also is a component of good sound uh, general business acumen. And then strategic acumen. We're gonna come back to talk about strategic uh, acumen in a few minutes because it's one of the four elements of right stuff that we all need to have. Now, beyond having a good sound business acumen, we also have to know our business know our business, know the business, the mission, the roles, the responsibilities, the vision, the strategy of the organization we serve. Uh, I tell you, I, I, over the years as I have gone and approached uh, internal audits key stakeholders, uh, the number one uh, concern that I hear when I ask management well, how do, you, how do you think your internal auditors are performing? Are your internal auditors giving, what, giving you what you need? Are the internal auditors a valuable resource in this company or this organization? Generally, I hear good things, but there's often a caveat. And the caveat is the internal auditors do a great job, but I wish they knew our business better. I wish they had a more fundamental knowledge of the business of our organizations. I know 
when I moved from, uh, from the Army uh, over to the Postal Service, you can't imagine how different the missions are of the United States Army and the United States Postal Service. I really had to, I really had to study long and hard and, and stay up late to fully master uh, the, the mission of the Postal Service, the, the idea of, of collecting and, and transporting and delivering of mail, 40% of the mail in the world, and it was very, very highly technical, very, very dependent on technology. But I knew as an auditor, because I was the Deputy Inspector General of the Postal Service, that I had to, for me to have any credibility, I had to really understand the mission. And then I eventually left there and I went to the Tennessee Valley Authority, which is the largest producer of electricity in the United States, the largest wholesale utility uh, company in the United States. I suddenly had to go to school to learn how, how you produce and transmit and transport and distribute electricity. So I needed to know my business if I was going to have any credibility. I, I would often get called to testify on Capitol Hill or go meet with members of Congress or, or senators. And if I didn't know and have a fundamental knowledge of my business, I would have been in big trouble. So the right stuff is all about having the business acumen. It's also about being strategic. The third of these four elements, being strategic. You know, strategy starts, and I think this is actually the second, I'm sorry. Strategy starts at home. If you don't have a strategy for internal audit, if the internal audit department itself doesn't have a strategic plan, in all likelihood, you got some work to do in proving that you've got the, the strategic mindset. Some of the key attributes for strategic internal auditors that they bring a vision uh, to the work that they do, that they have vision. They're not just looking at the horizon, they're looking beyond. If the, if the, most, if the most extensive plan that you ever generate is your one-year audit plan, you're probably not bringing nearly enough vision to the role. Every audit department I ever led, I put us through a five-year strategic planning process when I came in. Didn't mean I knew what audits I was going to do in three years, but it sure knew what, it sure involved knowing what kind of capabilities we needed to have in three years. They're also perceptive. Uh, strat strategic internal auditors bring perceptiveness. They can connect dots. They understand uh, that they, that sort of critical thinking role that internal auditors need to have. They they they're assertive, assertive without being. Uh, domineering, uh, they're flexible, and they're patient. Uh, I think too many of us as internal auditors are very tactical. We have to avoid the idea of being tactical in executing our mission. And I think, again, um, when we talk about transformational change, remember we talked about the, the definition of change agents, uh, the idea that we can, that we can be catalysts that help drive transformational change, uh, you must have a strategic mindset if you're going to help your organization uh, sort of uh, engage in that uh, transformation that often comes uh, in, in the era that, in which we're living. The most effective change agents also have um, the, the, the ability to build and sustain relationships. You know, if we think about, if someone's trying to get you to change, if, if you're being pushed to make changes, whether it's in your personal lives or in your business organization, if you're being asked to make changes, you're gonna need to trust the person or people who are pushing you to change. So really openness to change is, is rooted in, in trust. And, and really there are building blocks uh, of, of uh, positive relationships, and, and those are the building blocks that I, I got into and explored in trusted advisors. Now, some people have asked me, well, what is the difference between a trusted advisor and, and a change agent? And I guess my question, is, or my answer really is, um, let me finish this point before I advance. My question, my point there is that if you're gonna be an effective agent of change, you really have to build on those skills that it takes to be a trusted advisor. And I'll illustrate that a little more closely. How does a, 
a change agent and a trusted advisor, how do those compare? And I guess I would just simply say that I think change agents are almost invariably going to be trusted advisor, but not every trusted advisor will aspire to the level of being a change agent. And again, this is sort of building on a, a grid that I first created for the book Trusted Advisors a few years ago, where I talked about that ascending uh, up the ladder, really this maturity ladder in terms of what internal audit's mission and role can be, is a combination of your relationship skills or your relationship acumen and the expertise you bring to your role. And, and really, the, the higher up you move in terms of having strong relationships and strong risk control, governance, uh, expertise, strategic expertise, business acumen, all of the things we've been talking about. If, if, you're, if you have built strong relationships and they think you're really strong in, in your knowledge, skills, and expertise, I think you really have the opportunity to ascend to the level of being a true agent of change. Now, that's not a knock on a trusted advisor. It's just that some trusted advisors are very content to just give you advice, and they're not really that invested about whether that advice transcends or transforms uh, into real value for the organization. I, I believe we all have an opportunity to do more than just being trusted advisors. I think we can be agents of change in our organization. And the last of our four um, elements of right stuff is really having an innovative mindset. I've got a picture there of Steve Jobs with a quote that innovation is the ability to see change as an opportunity, not a threat. We have to be innovative and we must recognize that tried and true solutions are fine, but when we're dealing with unprecedented times and threats like we've been in COVID for the last year, we must also, uh, we must also bring an innovative mindset to the, to the table. We must uh, prepare uh, for innovation by recognizing what are the limitations in the way uh, that, that things are operating now, what are the limitations that, um, that we are faced with, with technology and all other elements. And, and I believe that disruption accelerates innovation. I've been saying that for the last year. I've seen so much innovation in our profession in the last 12 months since the onset of COVID. Um, I've seen so much innovation that it's truly inspiring. Uh, it's been a very trying time. It's been a scary time, but it's also been a time where a lot of us by necessity have had to get out there and become much more innovative in the way we operate, the way we conduct audits, the way we communicate. Um, so I believe we have demonstrated uh, innovative mindsets across our profession. Let me close by uh, sharing a couple of parting thoughts here. Uh, we can talk a lot about what it takes to be an agent of change, but I think that for me, the profession, our profession is gonna be in the hands of those who will be practitioners in the future. Most of you are gonna be practitioners in the future because you're here today and you have a, a, a career horizon that would say you're gonna be around. So what are the agents of the future? Well. I, I kind of like to play on words from time to time, as those of you who know me know, and I think that we have to move from being counters of change, coins and change, to being agents of change. And if we're going to do that, it requires us to deploy the kind of, of uh, skills and acumen we've been talking about here during our time together. We must be powerful voices for change in our organizations. We can't sit back and wait on others to ask us for advice, we have to be forthcoming. We have to get out there in front of issues and challenges. We have to have real ability to see further out in terms of risks. We need to uh, recognize that we're surrounded by talented change agents in our profession. And I think the one thing that I would say is a constant in the internal audit profession and in the world in which we live is uh, that change is the constant and I want every one of you to go forth from today and be agents of change in your organization.